That's right. Carrot season. April 3rd. Carrot season. We all know spring is coming. But there's no reason to dangle the carrot. Because it just leads to disappointment. So, let's see what it looks like this morning. April 3rd. What do you think, Swiffer? It'll come out tomorrow. Yeah. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom government dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun. Maybe minus 10, but tomorrow clears coronavirus and winter sorrows till there's fun. When I'm stuck in a day that's gray and snowy, I just stick out my chin with a grin and say, Oh, the sun'll come out tomorrow, so just procrastinate till tomorrow. Maybe no snow in May. Tomorrow, tomorrow, we'll do it tomorrow. Just put it a day away. When I'm stuck in a day that's frozen and boring, I just stick out my chin with your grin and say, Tomorrow, tomorrow, we'll do it tomorrow. Just put it a carrot day away. The last of the last days of winter now. I, I mean it this time. Last time it was like the preview to the final part of the days of the last days of winter. And we had kind of a warm up in between there, but that was just a temporary before the last day of the last days of winter. Because we're getting closer. And if you don't believe me, we'll cut you off. Even if, and I want to make this absolutely clear, even if you believe that it is the last days of winter and that Spring is actually going to come. You need to believe what I say right now, just like I required you to believe in 1975. And we'll cut you off if you don't believe it. You're a jerk. You sound like a, you sound like a governing body member. <laughs> You're arrogant. I'm. I'm. Why? Why does it gotta be so? Sensational and dramatic. Just saying it's the last days, or you know, we're all springs around the corner is good enough. You know, at least with a the forecast, mm -hmm. they're not requiring you to believe it. 
we all know that spring's coming. We, we don't need to be sensationalizing it. That kind of works against what Jesus Christ said about the end times. Do not go if they say this or that. It doesn't need to be sensationalized. We all know it's coming. Just do what you need to do to prepare for spring. Anyway, but there's no lack of sensationalism in the They're news. They're just hyping this up. Yeah. They're really hyping it up. And, you know, it kind of goes into this point of, with this whole coronavirus thing going on, and I wonder how they're dramatizing that. Because it's funny, there have been quite a few in the news. Um, I think one of them was uh, Lee Man He. And this is what was said about him. Um, and he's a South Korean minister, pastor, whatever you want to call it. But here's what was said about him. Uh, make sure I get his name right. Yeah, Lee Man He. He had to apologize for just ignoring uh, the warnings and basically spreading uh, the coronavirus. And this has been a few weeks now, but I just thought it was interesting because he is, uh, the, the article that I read says, uh, Lee is revered by his followers as the promised pastor who has taken on the mantle of Jesus Christ and he will take the 144,000 people with him to heaven on the day of judgment, which he will usher in in his own lifetime. So that puts that dramatic spin. Like I said, everybody thinks that they themselves are something special. Never mind what that scripture says about if you think you're something when you're nothing. Um, they think they're something special and that whatever is happening in their lifetime is the most important thing that plays into the, the grand scheme of things. Uh, another one. Uh, what's that chick's name that's in the news um, from Rexburg, Idaho? Lori... Vallow, Lori Vallow. Yeah. Yep. And I know there was an article about her as well. I'll pull that up. Uh, She's the one that was with the kids. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. several articles say this about her. Go ahead, Tiff, you want to read that one? Um, it says, under the doomsday cult mom of missing kids. Lori Vallow Daybell allegedly became infatuated and at times obsessive about her being a god assigned to carry out the work of the 144,000 at Christ's second coming in July. In July. Like when the pandemic's over? <laughs> I wonder if she's sitting there saying, that's right, you arrested me, and now God, the god greater than me, is now punishing you with no. the coronavirus. This whole thing's, this whole thing's dumb. And, and, you know... Sin, it just means to miss the mark. Everybody says, well, God's, if God's the one who's doing this, no, 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 then I don't want to believe in a God. That's not what at all what the scriptures teach. The scriptures don't teach that Jehovah is the one who does the pandemic. It's sort of like, or who does these earthquakes, or who does, you know, it's sort of like, uh, you used to be able to say, or not be able to say that there was an increase in earthquakes, for example, because Earthquakes affected more people because they happened to be living in areas. I mean, if an earthquake happened in this country 200 years ago, what would happen? I mean, the TP is going to fall over. Uh, a cabin might fall over and a couple people get hurt. Um, but as soon as you start putting people in skyscrapers and cramming them into cities, uh, which is not what God intended in the first place, um, that's why he dispersed them over the land, but as soon as you start doing that, any earthquakes that happen are going to have a greater effect on mankind. And it's the same thing with pandemics. Is it any surprise that the pandemic is having a greater effect in areas like New York City, where people are on top of one another? Um, or in South Korea, not a whole lot of square miles, but a lot of people there. Um, and it's not to say they can't do a good job at mitigating the circumstance uh, of the pandemic because they, they did, and so did Hong Kong, for example. Even China did okay, even though they got behind the ball a little bit and first uh, tried to tamp out the warnings that the doctor who even tried to warn everyone, they snuffed him out as far as 
may, as far as him being able to give a warning about those things. So it's not that these governments in these highly populated areas can't do the best they can and do a good job at mitigating it, but the sheer dynamics of having all those people in one place is going to create effects from earthquakes or effects from uh, the, uh, pestilences. But going back to the statement of God isn't the one who's doing this, earthquakes, again, 200 years ago would not have had a huge effect. There's always been earthquakes. And you could have said previously that it's only because those people are packed into those areas that we see that effect. Now, with things like fracking um, and building a huge dam, for example, in China, which has caused earthquakes because of all the mass of water that's weight that's sitting on that area, it's causing earthquakes. Now you can actually say that there is an increase in earthquakes because of that. And no doubt, as population continues to uh, grow, there's going to be more impact on people. But to say that God is the one who's doing that is, is misrepresenting not only God, but the effects that sin has on mankind, or missing the mark, as what Jehovah's Witnesses like to say, or, as I like to say, ignorance. We don't know the effects of the things that we do, and therefore it causes problems. We're not able to... Okay. It's like Jesus said about the Tower of Siloam. How did they know that it was going to fall? Were they more righteous or less righteous? No, they just were ignorant that time and unforeseen occurrence befall them all. We don't have that ability. But to place the blame on God like he's the one doing it, he's the one who carries all this out, that's not what the scriptures teach. So going back to this Valo thing and how she could sensationalize, and I'm not saying she is, but she could say that, you know, this this coronavirus thing is because you've arrested God's representative. <laughs> and, and so many individuals or entities, religious entities, could claim uh, because of whatever they're going through and then grab some headline that's happening around the world, this, this would be an easy one, this pandemic, and then apply it to themselves as being from God or, or playing into God's plan in regard to them, themselves. And that sort of goes into Toni Morris's statement. What did he say? Well, it's a, his statement was, we've been waiting for this. Yeah, we've been waiting. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me. We've been waiting for this. So it's like they just let these things play into their, I'm sorry, but if you're a doomsday preacher. It's self-importance. It's, it's their own self-importance. Right. But I'm saying just in general, if you're a doomsday preacher, anything that happens could be a war. It could yeah. be pestilence. It could be, and I'm not saying you shouldn't be a doomsday preacher to some degree. The Bible talks about these things, wars, reports of wars earthquakes in one place after another, you know, pestilence, those things are, as the scripture says, as Jesus said, a sign of the times, so to speak. And as those things increase over the span of that time, which is shorter than the times previous, so I'm not mocking the fact that we're in the last days, as they say, critical times hard to deal with that are here. That's true. And its effect on mankind is true. But to over-sensationalize it and try to use it for your own, try to use it to prop up your own importance, that's not what the scriptures or Jesus Christ intended. But even with this situation, even though it's not caused by God, that doesn't mean that Jehovah, the one who causes things to become, couldn't also do his thing in the middle of that as well. It's sort of like, I'm in a car wreck. I did not cause the car wreck. Someone hit me from the side, and yet I may operate my vehicle, or use my arm to brace my wife, or do any number of things inside my control to mitigate the consequences of the wreck, or even the overall outcome of the wreck and change the outcome into one that's not as bad or deflects 
the consequences on the one who brought it. Well, with an accident, it's just an accident. Sometimes some things happen on, on purpose. Um, it'd be sort of like someone shooting a gun at you, and yet you're able to grab the gun and turn it towards them before they're able to, to fire it at you. Um, but in regard to that, who knows what Jehovah's doing, the one who causes things to become in the grand scheme of things. And the wisest option is just to shut your mouth and wait and see. But uh, some things that we were thinking about, there was a, but there was a letter that you had saw on the internet. Yeah, I don't, it was on, it was on a Facebook post. I don't know if it's legit, but it was a letter from Watchtower to the elders about gathering a paperwork, legal documents, um, paperwork for appraisals for their buildings, the kingdom halls, that they needed to turn those into the branch for what I assume liquidation, but... Yeah, and it, but that's kind of funny. We could just discuss that whether it's a real letter or whether it's not. It's it's interesting in that regard because here they're the ones who a few years ago money grabbed all the congregations, and is it Jehovah saying, "Listen, I'm not approving of that at all. You want ownership? Fine, take the ownership. I'll just allow this pandemic to happen. Again, not cause." but allow, or maybe foresee what you're doing. You don't know the consequences of what you're doing. You can't foresee that there's going to be a pandemic. And your greed rush on these kingdom halls is to come back and bite you on the butt because you're not doing things the way that I stipulated to have them done. You are playing God and ownership over all these things. But let's just say that is the case and they decide to go through with that. And they have all this money piled, stockpiled, for whatever reason. But there's a lot of legalities with all these with all these cases that they could just yeah. lose their tails over. The, with the funding. Know? Yeah, but let's go back a little bit. So then they have to sell all these kingdom halls because, let's face it, they've taken all that debt on themselves in return for all these payments that are supposed to be coming in. Indefinitely. And if yeah. you're not in the hall, then their payments aren't coming in, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, out of sight, out of mind. If I'm not saying that people can't donate digitally and whatever else, but is the Kingdom Hall a lucrative venue anymore for that? And then conventions are out the window. Mm -hmm. Assemblies are, are out the conventions window. Conventions and assemblies are big money makers. I mean, you think about it. If there's an assembly with 10,000 people, and I'd say that's that's fairly average, at least from what we've experienced. Um, average? North Dakotas are smaller. But I would say in bigger, uh, if you, maybe. you know, back in Idaho, they were a little 8 I to think, 10. I think they used to be bigger. I think they've... I think they're a lot smaller than they used to be. Absolutely. But I, and I'm not saying that just because our whole circuit is a, a is its own, our whole state is its own circuit. And so, like, all of North Dakota, northern Minnesota, you know, a little bit in South Dakota, that'd be our district. That's a really large area. Yeah. That's a district. But our conventions are, what, how many people? Oh, I want to say, like, maybe 4,000. Yeah, four or 5,000. But again, that's a small one. Back in Idaho, where we were at before, they had them just about every weekend throughout the summer, over a couple months anyway. And so there were eight to 10,000 people. So I think that's probably a good average. I'm saying an average across the board for populated areas. And that's not even that populated area. I'd imagine places like California or in New York or any of these big cities, Philadelphia, whatever, they're going to have lots of more people and bigger conventions because you don't have the venues. At any rate, 10,000 people, even if everybody gives 20 bucks each, mm -hmm. you know, that's a couple hundred thousand dollars for each convention. And obviously some are going to give more, some are going to give less, but I'm just trying to throw some ballpark numbers out there, which obviously we, we don't know. The closest I ever got to counting was... Uh, standing guard at one of the counting rooms and it was it was a pretty funny story <laughs> we're sitting there and one of the brothers uh 
it was a he was an elder son, but he wasn't he was kind of on the skirts. But uh, he was still an elder son, so they used him a lot. He was on the skirts in a lot of ways. But anyways, it was hilarious. They said, uh, "You brothers come highly recommended." And he goes, "Yeah, my PO speaks pretty good about me." <laughs> not not presiding overseer. <laughs> That was funny, though. Um, but this whole idea of them selling the kingdom halls, it, that may be something they would have to do. I mean, to say, okay, we need to mitigate for a month or two, that's one thing. Uh, we can absorb those costs. But now that they've taken on all the debt of those, and granted they were probably their own bank, um, in other words, they're the ones who gave the loans out and they just took the loan back and said, you pay us indefinitely. Still, those are costs that they incurred without getting that continual uh, payment like they always thought they were going to get. And so now they're in this situation where, OK, we may not be going back to those kingdom halls for a year or at least months throughout the summer. And if it depending on how the governments all cooperate in mitigating this pandemic, it may come back again. When you go back to the Spanish flu, that's what happened mm -hmm. is it wasn't, it was a one-time thing and it went through and they did okay. And then it came back with another a vengeance. Wave. Yeah. Another wave of sickness. I want to say something that's just popped in my head about the Kingdom Halls being sold. People are really attached to their buildings, and I think even Jehovah's Witnesses are attached to their Kingdom Hall. Yep. And for years, people would say, I have heard said, like, all my life being around Witnesses. Like, since I was a small child, they would say, now, what would you do? How What would you feel if they came and chain-locked chain the Kingdom Halls and whatever, that whole line? And it's like, now there's a completely different situation. Because really, if they did meet in the Kingdom Halls, the government may do that. Yeah. They may come to the Kingdom Hall and say, no, you guys get out of here. We're told, we told everybody to stay home. And then it's like, oh, well, now we're being persecuted <laughs> because they're not listening. Or... Not, not obeying the governments. Yeah. Or it's like, now they're going to close up shop physically and then do all their online meetings. Yep. So then what are people going to be starting to think about the building now? Right. It's not there. Especially these ones who were like this elder down here who's his special pioneer it's parents. It's his second home. What do you mean? He parks his stuff in the driveway, <laughs> uses the garage for his own stuff. It's his second home. Par it literally parks his car in, a, in the, dr in the parking even, lot at the hall because it's got video cameras because he don't got room in his own garage. And he even said <laughs> like... You know, when they were doing the building, they they did the remodel. No, they, they built a new hall. Yep. Um, they were waiting for something. It was it was open. It was like uh, like there was walls open or something. And he decided that he was just going to sleep, sleep there during the construction. Like everybody went back to their places that they were staying. But he stayed at the building site and slept there. So it's like he feels like this special connection. To the building. To that building and land. Yeah. And what from what his parents did, and he gets kind of gets that way. You said you wanted to tell this story, so why don't you tell that story? That that yeah, it comes in my head a lot. Um, I think about it a lot. Where we were having a discussion with this particular elder and another elder. The ski elder. I won't go into great detail about the discussion right now. We were just back at the phone. I mean, at the uh, sound booth. Yep. And I don't remember what we were talking about, but the statement that I replay in my head constantly is my dad, this elder so-and-so. The, so -and -so, you the say? conversation was how so many of the brothers and the system is set up to elevate men for glory. Oh, yeah. And that's the conversation we were having. That's in right. fact, they that's wrote right. down that conversation as one of our official meetings they met with us like a shepherding call so in our good. in our records and that's why we say that everything that they every time they have a discussion with you they are writing it down as it's a meeting they met with you that's not the case at all we were just happened to be standing at the back of the booth and we were discussing how 
people to do what they're doing for glory and not for righteousness sake. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, and so then you wanted to... Yep, just the... So just the one the, elder pipes yeah. up. Not, yeah. the, not the ski elder, the other elder who thinks he owns the hall. <laughs> he said, and he was getting pretty animated about it. He was... He was, he was getting, emotional. He was, yeah, it was a... And I don't take offense to that, but he was. But just, just to go to... Sh just to, It just goes to show how passionate he was about this when he made this, this statement. My dad died with a watchtower in his lap. And because that's what he said, my dad was not... And I, don't, I didn't mention his dad at all. And no. it wasn't about his dad. It was about how it the system caters to the glory of men and giving glory of men. And and it's all about you're not spiritually appointed. You know when they're start no. getting ready to appoint somebody because they're standing up the up at the at the stage and saying, "Oh, it's like Brother Lombardi says." And they would. And I was like, "Why? Why are they all of a sudden doing this? Oh, they're holding me up. They're going to try to appoint me as an elder." Anyway. Uh, Anyway, the bo the bottom line is is that I didn't mention his dad at all. I was just talking we about that glory names. system. We weren't mentioning names about anybody. Just and he the says, idea. and he says, uh, well, to say that my dad, blah blah blah, you know, he was just out for glory. And then he went, uh, I, and I got no idea why he said it, but that's when he said, my dad died with a watchtower on his lap. And to me, I was like. Maybe you should have died with a Bible on your lap. That's the first thing that I thought of. Yeah, that's kind of telling, ain't it? <laughs> and But I wasn't going to pull his card on that one because, to me, there were bigger fish to fry that or I should attack him personally for some yeah. a ridiculous statement like that. It wasn't a personal attack, but just the point that he went off like that. Now, what year, year did your dad die? I wonder if he was reading that 1975 article. I don't think so. No, I'm just, it, so. it was way after that. I'm just making it funny that how many things are wrong in the watchtower that you read and you're going to die with a watchtower on your lap? That's the thing you're going to cling to? What if you're, the locks on the kingdom hall were closed and you couldn't get that spiritual food? I'm sorry, spiritual food is there anyway. Yeah. It's in the Bible. Yeah, it reminds me of those scriptures where it says the temple, the temple. You cling on to it. Yep. And also, who was that guy that clung on to the... Um... That would have been Joab when Solomon was yeah. chasing him down. Clung on to the altar. Yep. And they said, fine. You, Solomon said, yeah. kill him at the altar. Spill his blood on the altar then if that's where he wants to be. Because he was just so sure that was, the, that was what she did. Yeah. So what else on that? So if they, it's, so if they sell the kingdom halls... We know it's going to pick up and they're going to sell more and more of them. And the more and more people that aren't going to them, that's just a reason to sell them. And especially if there's going to be some sort of an economic crunch, is it wiser to sell them now mm -hmm. and move fast and sell them? Or is it wiser to wait and sell it at the end of that? Because I think they are pretty, well, obviously pretty wise in how they manipulate their real estate and their stocks. Uh, I just think If you've about... been doing it for that long, you're going to be good at it. Yeah, and I and I think about some of these areas like they've been real careful about what they're saying, but also in these larger areas where they're like cities like um, L.A., New York, Toronto. I mean, all these big yep. cities. It's a lot easier to kind of merge congregations because you're not having to travel far. And in our case, like in this state, like I said, the whole state is a circuit. So if they decided that they were going to close down, well, I'll just use the R area, our few counties for an example. Yep. The closest hall to the east would be 70 miles, and then beyond that, it's 110 miles, and the other way, it's 100 miles. And those kingdom halls have a publisher count of like 35 yeah. each, yep. and then you know, like Grand Forks is 110 miles, and they've got. They've got two halls. I don't know what their publisher count is, but even when we were going there, I can't say there was 50 sitting there. But it would take nothing for, because I think Grafton, where I'm talking about, it's like a 45-minute drive, if you're driving the speed limit. It's like a 45-minute drive, so what's 45 minutes for people to drive to the next hall? You know, the 20 people that are in that hall to drive somewhere else, if you live there. No. But out here, it would be a whole lot harder but they closed up Langdon, for example. There used to be a hall here, and they just pretty much leave the people abandoned. Yeah, and those people just 
didn't do anything. You either follow us or that's it. But now that they've got their online thing, you know, who knows? Yes. I think a lot of people will be like, ah, finally I get a little bit of freedom. They're not barking down my neck asking me for all these things. Telling me what shoes to wear and... I think some of that pressure will, will be gone. Yeah. You know, and who... If, Which is a good thing it's easy not to. It's easy not to just sign into a meeting, you know? Yeah. yeah. But as far as going back to Tony's statement of, doesn't bother me, we've been waiting for this. What a perfect opportunity if their numbers have been on the decline. Yeah. It's sort of like the monkey joke. Um, and no, it's not racist. I talked about African monkeys because Africa has monkeys. I should have, maybe it, they don't have monkeys in North America, unless they're in zoos. I suppose I could have said South America. I think they've got monkeys there. I'm not a zoologist. You should have just said a land where there is monkeys. I then could everybody have. could have been happy about it. Doesn't we're not? Yes, it was no. It was by no means meant to be prejudice in any way. It's the way I heard the joke. I didn't see any prejudice from the individual who told me the joke. Anyway, but it's like that monkey joke. Um, they see the opportunity. I'm not saying they create the opportunity, but as soon as the stocks are up there and they have the opportunity to bail out, boom, they're selling it all. And it's the same thing here with the kingdom halls. Here they put all the control in their own hands and they're kind of selling off one here, selling off one there. And then all of a sudden, as soon as the opportunity arises, mm -hmm. is that, do they take that as, oh, well, that's Jehovah's direction for us. Let's eliminate all these kingdom halls now. When preparation meets opportunity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's prepare so we can use that opportunity. Yeah. Jump on it. So it's 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 kind of funny watching all that play out because one could say, yes, that's Jehovah's direction for us. See, we've been wanting to sell these kingdom halls and we've got all these lawsuits to pay and, brr, and so we're going to sell them. Or mm -hmm. is it the other side of the coin of, you see, that's Jehovah's direction for you because it's your punishment. Because here you hoarded all that for yourself, and then you did incorrect things with the uh, uh, child sex abuse and how they, you dealt with that. And now I'm going to give you all the money so you can pay these people back and all the different kind of abuses that you pulled on people. Um, so you could play it either way. And I'm not going to say which it is. And I'll just say, let's yeah. just wait and see. Yeah. Let's wait and see. But of course they have to, you know, scrape a few off, a few dollars off the top so that way they can buy themselves some special things, you know. A new Rolex. A new Rolex. Tony Morris's car looked kind of old. He probably it needs was a an new, older Cadillac. He needs a newer Cadillac, don't yeah, you think? Probably. Are you kidding me? You don't need no newer Cadillac. They got their place on lockdown. Yeah. They're gonna. They're not. It's funny how they'll keep going, we need to meet together, but they'll lock down their own little complex. They'll lock down their own little complex. You know, I wonder what would Where happen. Where they live. Yep, Where exactly. Where they live. And not allow any, I'm sure they're totally limiting what comes in and who comes in and making sure that they don't ever get sick because it's the old joke of there was a politician, an old man, and a Boy Scout in a plane, and it's going down. And... As the plane goes down, the pilot says, uh, well, I've got one of the chutes. There's two left. You guys can do what you want with them. And he bails out of the plane. And then uh, the politician, he stands up and he goes, well, you know, I've been voted by the people to lead the people. So I'm so important. And, you know, I've, uh, with my intellect and my education to lead the people, I really need to have one of these parachutes because the people will be lost without me. And so after, you know, going on and on with that, as he's putting on the... Uh, his, his shoot, he jumps out the window. And the old man looks at the yeah, the Boy Scout, the young kid, and he goes, uh, well, you know, I've lived a good, satisfying life, and you, you, you really should. I'd only got, even if I live, I'm only going to have a few years left. You should, you should have this parachute, the last parachute, so go ahead. And the Boy Scout looks back at the old man. He goes, ah, don't worry about it. The smartest politician in the world just jumped out the plane with my knapsack. So it's like they, they think they're so important that they need to be protected. 
if there ever was a hostage situation and somebody wanted the governing body to step up, do you think they'd really step up? Because that's not what's in the literature. The literature is about, oh, we t protect our brothers. Well, who do you think they're talking about? They're talking about up the chain. Everything's up the rank with them. You know, so you may get busted. Would you rat out your brothers where they're at? Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, their, their love, as Jesus called love, which would be to sacrifice themselves for their brothers, it ain't there. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's there. It's like a, one more story before we cut off of this. We were sitting with one of the elders, that same elder who thinks he owns the kingdom hall, and he was uh, discussing, you know, the end and, and the government's coming upon us, you know, and uh, going along with that, it was right after that convention they had where they showed the video of they're all hunkered down in the basement and, you know, the, the SWAT team or whatever you want to call it is beating on the door and they come in and they're all standing up high chested, you know, and this elder says, well, that's us elders. That's what, we, that's, that's us. And it's like, I said to him, so, so then they're going to wax you and then I'm going to have to make my own stand anyway, aren't I? I mean, you're so arrogant to think us elders are going to save the day. Well, it's either Jehovah's saving power or it's not. And if Jehovah's going to save me, or I'm going to die with my own integrity, it's going to be based on that. If it's Jehovah's saving power, it has nothing to do with the elders standing up there big-chested between the sheep and the uh, offensive governments, it, because they're going to wax you, and I'll have to stand on my own integrity anyway. And again, if you're standing up there, it's Jehovah's saving power, not you. You can go sit in the back if you want with the knapsack. What did he say when you said that? He just got big eyed like, oh yeah, that was kind of stupid, wasn't it? Oh. It's dumb. <laughs> anyway. That's funny. Anything I, else? I, I don't know. That joke's, I mean, that's that, not the joke. It is a joke. <laughs> it, the joke's on them, but I just find it funny because this particular elder is like this big. I mean... He's a skinny guy, really tall. It would take nothing to just snap him like a twig. I mean. Yeah, and that's, I don't understand. And it doesn't matter. You could be big and burly. I know. If you're standing up in front of a machine gun. But just what I'm saying. Being big chested about it, it doesn't matter. If it's no, Jehovah's it saving power, it's got nothing to do with you. And how you're going to stand between the sheep and the governments. Like, you're going to be doing anything. There's no, re there's no need for you to do it. And I'm not trying to make... Go it. sit in the back with the Boy Scouts knapsack, would you? Yeah, and I'm not trying to make fun of him as a person. I'm just saying the idea of him just going to be physically yeah. standing up like that, it's ridiculous. Yeah. But I would like to know if that letter is legit or not. Oh, that one, that Elder's letter mm -hmm. the, yeah. from the branch saying to send in all your... Uh, the, assessments the illegal and, appraisals and stuff like that all the documents or whatever yeah. yeah and i just yeah i just can't help but think if that's legit be interesting yeah it's, really it's not out of the realm of possibility uh and I, I wouldn't put it past them oh absolutely that. No that, way. That, to me quite honestly it would make sense one way or another it would make sense as far as a business goes yeah, yeah. and they're businessmen in a lot of ways yep but anyway yeah I'm trying to see if they got my test um it's not godly, <laughs> but it makes sense. <laughs> but since most people are on lockdown, our lives haven't changed. Grocery stores pretty much still packed. Yeah, we're not going as often. I mean, I usually go to the grocery store once a week. Everything was there. They had a sign on the toilet paper and, and cleaning supplies or whatever, that, and wipes that said, you know, limits limit two, two per customer or something. But there wasn't really any... Major shortages, I would uh, say. Not shortages, but prices were different. Like to something. Eggs. eggs. Oh my goodness! We have a like a Hutterite colony here that supplies eggs to this, you know, like this area. And so eggs are easy to get, and I think they're normally like around a dollar thirty, dollar fifty a dozen, and they were like four fifty for eighteen. 
I think that's expensive. Probably not as much as there are in some places, but... True, and I just... I don't know. Maybe I'm just... Not paying attention. But, uh... But for us, most things haven't changed that much. Uh, mm -hmm. We wash our hands more. We don't really have many con much contact, as I said before, with other people. I know a lot of you that live in apartments. It's got to be absolutely difficult mm -hmm. um, being locked in an apartment. Here we've got room to roam. It's kind of funny. I read a Facebook post. <clears throat> and of course, it's uh, a lot of it's from people that are around here. And I don't. We don't have. I don't have a personal Facebook, but. I uh, got one for the car show, but uh, it said somebody had said when you find out that your normal life is called quarantine. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I was talking to a buddy of mine, Clint. You, know, you see in the video we put out with him. You know, he's got his own farmstead. He lives on, you I know, think, twelve acres. And and he drives out his door, goes to work. Mm -hmm. Works know. right at home. So I mean, it, he could still go out and. Mm -hmm. Do everything he does normally, mm -hmm. except for when it comes to people coming to his place of work. He's set up arrangements. He's locked the front door and, and doesn't allow people in and, and just tells them, park your car out front and I'll leave it there when I'm done with it. Tell me what you need done with it. So he's, that's what he does a lot of that type of the business over the phone. Mm -hmm. And uh, and even dealing with money. He's like, you just set the money right there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> drop the check in the it. box. I'll deal with it later. You know, let it sit there for a few days. And, yeah. But, uh, but, so, I mean, it does affect you as far as it's around you, but your day-to-day -day life, uh, mm -hmm. it hasn't affected us that much. So we really do feel for you people who are yeah. in more packed in areas, you know, that are especially apartment complexes, man, you're on lockdown for two months or however long it is. It's mm -hmm. no doubt a little more, uh, difficult, but I think a lot of what we go through as far as that is we take on the mental of the society in general. So, you know, you're watching the news, it's on the news. Mm -hmm. So you're almost, it, it like rubs off on you in a way to where you're doing some of the things the rest of society is doing, even though it's not affecting you the same. Um, like we stayed in and made cookies the other day. To... We're eating a lot more, I feel like, than we normally do. Yeah, yeah. I shouldn't say we're eating more, we're snacking more. Yeah. Than we, we... I mean, I know that's eating, but I'm saying we're not eating like, okay, we're going to eat this and then we're going to go to work and do that. But it's like, a, like you said, I make cookies or we're doing the crackers and cheese thing or we're, you know, we're just eating a lot snackier things than typically do. And I don't know how that will do as the last days of the last days of winter finally give way to spring. But uh, because we'll obviously get out more as far as that goes. And we still don't have a coronavirus in our county at all. I think the closest one is the county. 70 miles away. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, South of us. And I think the one east of us, 70 miles away, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it's around, but it's not, again, not affecting our day to day life. Not that it will, even if it does, because we're not, people are not a packed on top of one another. It's like I went outside and I looked down the street and I'm like, oh, it's weird. It's like, there's nobody on the streets. <laughs> oh, you mean like normal? <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a joke, but. Yeah. Or like our guest house, we've got guests in it right now, and they happen to be some workers that are in town, and we're not going over there to do the laundry as far as the beds. It's like, you guys can do it. We set up, a, you know, there's a washer and dryer downstairs. You do your own laundry. So things like that. We're mm -hmm. making sure that we don't interact with people where we normally would. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I, I think our life pretty much hasn't changed too awful much. Mm -hmm. But enjoy Tiffany making cookies on her cooking shows. Cooking shows? Cooking show. I have a cooking show. <laughs> No, I don't have a cooking show. It was just out of boredom, and I wanted cookies, and I wasn't going to sacrifice my health to going to the store to buy cookies. So you made them, or I made them, and you ate them. Ready? You're on. So I, I'm afraid to go to the store and buy some cookies, so I'm going to make some cookies. And I decided what sounded good were the molasses ginger cookies, the big soft ones. So I've got all my ingredients here just for expediency. I have butter, three quarters of a cup of butter, and I'm going to mix, I have to cream this, 
I'm gonna add one cup of sugar to that. Who wants to get fat? I do. Actually, I just like to have with my coffee. So I'm gonna scrape the sides down. Next, workout videos. <laughs> yeah. Butter and sugar now. And Hurry up and mix my dough that I can eat. To that, I'm going to add, in here I have an egg, vanilla, and just a little bit of water. That in there. Just give it a little bit. And then I'm going to add my molasses. It's just blackstrap molasses. You haven't tried my molasses. Um, molasses is high in iron, so this is good for my iron problem. Don't you always love those cooking shows? My cookies! Oh, come on, you probably stole the recipe off the internet, just like the rest of us. Every little drop. Okay, I'm going to mix this till it's smooth. Scrape the sides down and then I'm going to add the flour and the spices. And I can leave the recipe in the description. That way we can all eat cookies together. Yeah. Because I did get this off the internet, just like you said, you know. <laughs> Not my cookies. You haven't tried my cookies. Everybody always says that. What kind of cookies are these? My cookies. Yeah, but what kind are they? They're ginger molasses gingerbread. Well, I don't like gingerbread cookies. Well, you haven't tried my gingerbread cookies. Okay. So in here I have all the spices, ginger, cinnamon, cloves, and some baking soda. And then I have flour in here. I'm just going to add a little bit at a time. Because I don't want to be cleaning up flour dust everywhere. Oh, come on. You take all the fun out of it. I know, I do. Live a little. Crack the throttle on that bad boy. See if it'll pull a wheelie. Oh, there you go. Smoking them tires. I get to eat that now? No. Why? Because I'm making cookies. What's that got to do with anything? Okay, I've got to scrape this in here and just make sure there's nothing on the bottom of the mixer bowl. Looks good. What if I don't like the ginger rest. cookies? Then I'll eat them all. Because they're so good. You know what I should have bought? You know what I should have bought? I should have bought some cream cheese and made some of the filling like you get mm -hmm. in the... What are those? Those oatmeal cookies? Mm -hmm. I'm making those two here. I really don't like oatmeal cookies. Yeah, but... You haven't tried my oatmeal cookies. <laughs> it's like when people... I hate stuffing. And they're like, you haven't tried my stuffing. Um, is it soggy bread that comes out of a turkey's butt? Well, then I don't want any. Uh-oh, coronavirus. No, it's not. 
it's the flower. Uh huh. Coronavirus doesn't have sneezing. Yes, it does. I thought it was just fever and coughing and. I saw mild sneezing. Oh, really? So you better sneeze either a whole bunch nope. or not at all. If you sneezed once, you have coronavirus. It's not coronavirus. It's the flower. I, I think coronavirus is a new holiday. Okay, so. It's like people are going to start making songs like, you know, they did with, uh, what was the song about pocket pull of posies? What was that about? It was some kind of a plague. I can't remember. Yeah, I don't remember which plague it was. Ring around the rosy, pocket full of posy, ashes, ashes, we all fall no, down. Not. I can't remember what it's called. I don't remember which so one it was. So this is what it will look like, just like that. And then, um, I have a little bit of sugar here, and I'm just going to use my plate. Coronavirus, coronavirus, we all stay home to avoid you. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a good song. And you take a ball like that and just ball it up like this and roll it in the sugar. That's actually kind of big, but that's okay. We like cookies that are big because then you can eat. Put stuff ice cream in the middle of them. Yep, so just like that. And then I'm going to put them on my pan. And these get really sticky, so I try not to over, you know, mix them or over roll them. I was at the post office talking to somebody who was a senior in high school and they were, school's out forever. Oh, really? You know, they're, they're, uh, course doing some online classes but no prom no graduation no then, graduation really? parties it's just like they're jehovah's witnesses but she was saying uh well they're off for this week and the next week is kind of undecided i'm like but the kids but the kid weren't the, the kids um have to clean their lockers exactly up? and that's what i said i said uh here let me help you out you're not going back yeah i saw that on facebook that they were asked to come clean their kids lockers out even like in um like junior high and now we have let's see in our state we have as of today which is what is today 21st the 21st we have six six counties in our state that have um, one of one of them is 70 miles south in Devil's Lake and the other is, is 90 miles east in where rugby's at those two counties and that's close in North Dakota talk because people drive an hour for everything I mean yeah. that's the closest Walmart. we're 70 miles from yeah a Walmart from a McDonald's so cracking out mileage here it's like you know saying a mile is like saying a block Some people in these farmer yards, they're literally, their neighbor is a couple miles away. If you don't say something, I'm going to start singing another song. Let me see. I think I'm only going to have room for like nine on a pan. Because I'm making them a little bit bigger. I should have made them small. Because then when you eat more, you don't feel like you're, it's not, it's not as much of a guilt trip like oh my gosh well I don't know maybe it's just I could say I only ate one cookie just one giant cookie instead of saying yeah I had like four cookies <laughs> it's easier this way yes because fooling your own mind is what it's all about that's what diet is all food and diet is that way that's the cognitive dissonance part <laughs> okay. so my oven is already preheated to 
big 350. Okay, let me wash my hands again. And then I'm going to put these in the oven. And I don't know how long. I gotta look at the thing here. It says about 10 minutes. So I'll set the timer for 10 minutes and I'll check them. I decided to make another kind of cookie. This is just plain old oatmeal cookies. These are still good too with coffee in the morning. And I'm just mixing these by hand. I'm not using my mixer for this. So what's in here? I have my recipe so it's a lot easier to manage by hand, but in here is um, shortening regular white sugar, brown sugar, an egg, and some vanilla. And then this one is my oatmeal flour, and I just put a lid on it, or a piece of plastic on it. Oatmeal flour, baking soda, and a little bit of salt. And I'm just going to mix these together in one bowl, and it'll be done, or the batter will be done. Hopefully I can get this all in this little bowl mixed. I should have got a bigger bowl. Those are like the antique, uh, one of those Pyrexes or whatever? They actually, I think, were part of an old, um, like a mixing set. Hmm. I'm not sure if you can put these, if there's like a, you know those mixers had those bowls attached to them? Yep. The mixer. I think they were for that. And I got them some, probably somewhere like a, you know, like a, what do you call it? Rummage sale yeah, or something. Yeah, like a garage sale or something like that. And I just wash them up. And, and I do have a bigger bowl too for that set. We try to use anything old that we can get our little hands on. These are just plain oatmeal cookies. In fact, I think this recipe might even be on the back of the Quaker oatmeal container. So anybody can get a hold of this recipe. It's simple. I can put that in the description too. It's so easy. No, you haven't tried my oatmeal it's cookies. It's Quaker recipe. <laughs> and sometimes I'll add like just a little bit of cinnamon to this or... Cloves would be good. But we've already got these that are like cinnamon clove tasting, so I'm just going to leave these plain. You could even add like um, white chocolate chips or regular chocolate chips to this. That'd be really good too. And then you could say it's my oatmeal cookies. Yeah, everybody's got to make a claim to it. So that's all. Looks like it's almost all mixed now. I'm just mixing with a fork. Make sure it's all incorporated at the bottom. There's no flour at the bottom. Incorporated. Would that be like a 5013 c <laughs> Non-profit. <laughs> yeah. These are not for profit. So, just like that, those are ready to go. As well. The other way. Okay, I think these might be close to being done. My dinger went off. My timer went off, but they weren't quite ready, so let's just check these out. Finger. These look um, kind of doughy still, so I'm going to put them back in for another couple minutes. Yeah. So my timer just went off again. I'm going to check these. I think these look better. They're not too big. I think I could handle more than one. Yeah. They'll still be a little soft, obviously, to the touch because they're still hot. So I'm going to grab myself a spatula. We'll let those cool off. And then I'll eat them. i got a spatula here, and I'm going to let them cool just for a minute. I need to find a container. To put, I'm just going to put them on this. Yeah, they're perfect. Those will be so good. I wish we had some ice cream. We could make ice cream sandwiches. It'd be really yummy. But I'm not willing to. I'm not willing to go to the store and sacrifice my good health for ice cream.
Yeah, they look good. They smell good too. Yes, they do look good. Yeah, they're they're perfect. So I'm gonna do the same thing and put the the next nine cookies on here. Just ball them up, roll them in sugar, and put them on the pan and stick them in there. I would say that this size is about as big as my palm. I don't know if that's. They had to be in there for about 14 minutes, but it, obviously it depends on where you live in the country, high elevation or not, and also um, your oven. Well, I can't wait anymore. You well, you're doing that. I'm going to give you it a try. You haven't even waited. Well, I waited like 13 seconds. That's not very long. Oh, hot. Of course they're hot. Mmm. But they're yummy. Are they good? Mm-hmm. Not too gingery. Oh, really? I should have added more. I like them kind of spicy. That was just kind right. strong. Okay, let's try to get these back on the pan. So I got all the cookies done. Mm -hmm. I got all the and they're good, too. This, mat, this batch made 22 cookies. Three were already eaten. I haven't had one, but Chad ate three of them. So now I'm just going to use the same pan, Swiffer. same um, temperature and everything. And I already got my little, I have a good ice cream melon ball scooper. And I just scoop my um, dough into it, and that's one cookie. So it's all going to be even. Each cookie will be evenly sized like that. Cookies. Mm -hmm. Me like cookies. Cookie monster. That's what Swiffer is. Right. That's the cookie monster. We call her cookie monster all the time. She lo I love cookies. She does. She's a cookie monster. Timer just went off. Let me check these. They look good, but they're not quite ready. They're still just a little bit too doughy. They look great. Mm -hmm, they look wonderful. I should have mixed chocolate chips in those. Okay, timer went off again. Yeah, they look much better. Oh, man. Can I have one? Not yet. Why not? Because you have to let them cool down a little bit. Just a little bit. I have to find a container to put these in. I gotta take a picture of them first, because that's what we all do, is take pictures of our food. <laughs> <laughs> take pictures of our food before we eat it. Mm-hmm. So I gotta find a tin. Last one. They look perfect. So we ate two. Mm. So we? Made, I don't remember eating one of them. I mean, I did. One, <laughs> two, that's 12. Ain't a we and I. That made 18 cookies. So 22 and 18 is what we made. Mmm. That's going to be good breakfast. I like the ginger ones better. Maybe like we can make a, a, a squishy sandwich. We can take oh. it and, and maybe you can make some of that frosting. The I'm dog's like, give me some of that, buddy. That's it.